All right, a major statement has come in from the Chinese president regarding Taiwan. And of course, it will draw reactions from world powers. Him has all the details for you. Over to you. Thank you so much, Shivan. And now, differences over Taiwan's status have fueled rising tensions between the island and the Chinese mainland. Taiwan has the potential to be a flashpoint in the U.S.-China relations and the tensions are rising. Taiwanese president has rebuked Beijing's efforts to undermine democracy. On the other hand, Beijing has ramped up political and military pressure on Taipei. Xi Jinping says that the Chinese army must dare to fight. Here's a look at China's claims over Taiwan. Now, Xi Jinping inspected Chinese forces that were operating in a flashpoint region near Taiwan and said that the army here must dare to fight. Now, during an inspection of the People's Liberation Army's Eastern Theatre Command, she said that the armed forces should be good at fighting. The Chinese president urged the military representatives to resolutely defend national sovereignty and security. He said, and I'm quoting here, the world has entered a new era of turbulence and change. Security situation is more unstable and uncertain at this point. As per reports, Xi Jinping stated that it is necessary to deepen war and combat planning. He added that the focus on military training for actual combat and accelerate the improvement of China's capacity to win. Taiwan has lived for decades under the constant threat of an invasion by China. Beijing claims Taiwan as part of its territory to be seized one day, even by force if required. However, many Taiwanese people consider their self-ruled island to be distinct whether or not independence is ever officially declared. Beijing plans to control strategic choke points here and deny access to foreign forces. China has also continued to use grey zone tactics to test Taiwan's response. Grey zone tactics, these include sending drones, balloons, fishing boats to areas that are close to Taiwan. Now, China's military's Eastern Theater Command last year sent more than 1,700 aircraft into Taiwan's air defense identification zone. The United States has remained a key ally and an arms supplier to Taiwan. Washington does not officially have diplomatic relations with the self-governing Taiwan, which China claims as part of its territory. It has switched diplomatic recognition from Taipei to Beijing in 1979. Washington and Taipei maintain unofficial ties through the de facto U.S. Embassy on the island. The United States is also the island's second largest trade partner. Beijing resists any hint of diplomatic relations between Taiwan and other governments. And Beijing held large-scale military exercises in response to a visit to the island by then U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi last year. And in April, China conducted three days of drill simulating a blockade and the Island at the island after Pelosi's successor Kevin McCarthy held talks with Taiwanese leader Tsai Ing Wen in the United States. Now, for more on this, we're now being joined by Bishop Garrison from Alexandria, Virginia. He is a fellow at National Security Institution at George Mason Law School and adjunct professor at Georgetown University. So, thank you so much for joining us on the broadcast. Thank you for having me. So to begin with, how do you assess these statements that are made by Chinese President Xi Jinping? Well, uh, first of all, we need to take into account the time and history in which this is happening. As you mentioned, uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Secretary Yellen has uh, just visited Taiwan. We've known that China is continuing to have certain levels of provocation when it comes to uh, Taiwan and the U.S. relationship there. But uh, the pre uh, President Xi, excuse me, has made these types of comments in recent history. Just as recently as uh, March, he gave this type of rallying of the troops speech in which he uh, called for them to, to dare to fight. And in some instances, that roughly translates to dare to struggle. And it uh, goes back to an overall ideological sense that uh, the Chinese government is always uh, fighting for its place uh, in the world. The big piece here for the United States is that uh, the uh, Chinese uh, government, the Communist Party, is very focused on doing everything it can to erode uh, the leadership that the United States has been able to project over time within uh, the, the geopolitical sphere. So while we're seeing a provocation here in, in uh, terms of uh, what's happening more broadly in uh, global society might be new, this type of rhetoric that he uses is, that he is using is not necessarily new at all. 
Mr. Garrison, just to take a little further, now, is it a direct message to the US, which we all know is the main backer of Taiwan's autonomy at the moment? And how do you see this statement being made while Janet Yellen is in China to perhaps ease tensions? Well, just uh, recently, whenever uh, President Biden had the opportunity to speak on this himself, he said that uh, the status quo when it came to the one China policy uh, has not changed. And uh, we should not uh, believe that it's going to change anytime in the near future. We want to continue to see uh, stability in the region. Uh, China has its own economic strife internally. It's continuing to still rebound, though it, it seems as though it's making progress, but it's continuing to uh, rebound uh, itself uh, during uh, post-COVID. And we shouldn't uh, overlook the idea that they align themselves with the Russian government, who is uh, continuing this uh, heinous, illegal uh, invasion of uh, Ukraine's sovereignty. So China is dealing with a lot of different issues on many different fronts. And this type of speech, this type of rhetoric is really meant, if anything else, to kind of draw maybe strength internally as much as it is to try to uh, poke at the United States internationally and remind them that China does care what happens in Taiwan. All right. Sir, thank you so much for joining us on this broadcast with your insights on this. Thank you for having me.